I know it's versus secret, but I'm gonna go with the underdogs. It is the underdog tournament, so let's. Shiver, save us, because I'm gonna go with J Storm too. I mean, I have seen Moo on this life stealer yep. so many times, yep. and Secret are so confident it could be hubris. I have not seen the guy lose with it yet. Well, I uh, I hate to say it, no, but Shiver, I do like J Storm's draft. However, <laughs> I think Secret is the better team in this matchup, no. and they're going to show it in this game. By the way, guys, in case you've forgotten, of course, you can also vote for your MVP during this game. Make sure you hashtag them in the player's name. Everything's just written the way you think it is. There's no odd spellings this time around, but make sure you do it during the game. And let's head over to Boxing and Gods for game one. All right, well, two assassins enter. One assassin is going to be destroying the ancient. But who will it be? Will it be the phantom assassin or the Templar one, gods? What do you think? We'll find out. It's uh, what, a second TA pick I think we've seen here on the mainstream. We saw Abed play it for Fnatic. Excited to see it again. Definitely a hero that's a little bit out of the meta, isn't feeling quite as strong with some of the changes, particularly the ancients. Um, just having, you know, less farm on the map and it's a kind of slow hero. but. It's something J Storm feel good about because of the matchup they've got here in the mid lane. It's also uh, definitely a Brile hero coming out with this TA. So I guess, you know, sometimes it's when your back's against the wall, you want to get those heroes that you're comfortable with and uh, do feel, you know, like you've got a favorable matchup. But yep. we'll find out for sure. I get to see the, the Zai three position puck, puck a hero that Secret have shown a lot of prowess at this tournament, running as a support, a core, as both off lane as well as potentially mid and something they've had a lot of success with. Well, Zai was incredible in the last game with the Bounty Hunter, and that's, you know, a fairly elusive hero, but uh, definitely, you know, Puck very hard to pin down, so I have a feeling we're gonna see some really great plays coming out from Zai, but uh, yeah. do you see a swap coming out with the the lanes here? Moo making his way back down, and uh, the Puck actually taking his time up in the top lane yep. for Secret. Very interesting starting item from Tusk, getting this Blightstone. Something I feel like we normally you'd expect an orb of venom if you want an aggressive laning item, but with the puck there, who's a great laning harasser, he wants to have that minus armor so he can just amplify the puck's harass and well, mm, almost gets a first right blood there. off of it. That lift barely comes out in time. Zai didn't have the orb up to chase. I feel like March is going to have a difficult time in this bottom lane too, with the amount of harass coming out. The fact that puppy, you know, he's going to be able to spam that uh, mist coil. Yep. And from what we've seen in a puppy playing this five position Abaddon, he's just gonna spam the Mist Coil to heal up his carry and then spam it to harass offensively and then look to deny himself using his last bit of mana. So it's this incredibly efficient way to play the lane where you die, you deny yourself and you can TP back the lane with full health, full mana and even bring your carry his items and suddenly you've got a big advantage. It's definitely a value pick, and uh, what was it? It was Liquid also doing that too. It was Liquid and Secret at the beginning of this tournament that yep. really were playing this hero, but... Uh... I haven't seen too many other teams pick up the hero just yet, but we'll see if that changes. I mean, Secret, you know, they're in the lower bracket, but it is one of those heroes that you had a lot of success with. A lot of harass coming out over here on mid one. Going to be forced to pop that healing cell. But of course, side blades, of course, very, very good at being able to harass. And you see Brile just lining each one of these up and trying to get the maximum amount of harass possible. Yeah, seven denies already. Mid one just using that astral whenever possible. Misses that range creep because of the uphill miss, unfortunately. That would have been a nice deny for him to get. But 8-8 eight, eight with a wave pushing towards his tower. TA just 6-3. But getting some good harass, as you mentioned. They're using the side blades very effectively. And sometimes what happens in these mid lanes, you can win the CS battle, but if you lose a lot of health to do so, you're forced to buy a lot of extra regen. So the net gain is some sometimes, you know, not really there, where you kind of have an even lane despite getting more CS. All right. And TA, of course, you know, already having a great lane here, being able to harass over onto mid one, but uh, can also catch up too in the jungle. If she pushes out the wave, just goes over to those camps and uh, just keeps on trucking. Yep. So. Like we'll see a, a fairly passive laning stage uh, with the 2-1-2 setup. Both sides looking to use these defensive pulls on their safe lanes as much as possible. Um, less possible for J-Storm down bottom. It feels like anytime Witch Doctor, you know, if you leave the lane to go for a pull, Lifestealer being a melee hero is going to get harassed heavily, whereas someone like the Puck up top, 
doesn't mind if the support goes missing uh, for 30 seconds to do a pull because you're a puck, you're ranged, you're sitting back, you've got defensive tools, life sealer, not so much the case. It's been very difficult in that bottom lane too, like we talked about, just constantly seeing that Ms. Quo getting spammed over onto the Witch Doctor. And if you notice, he's very, very low on mana because he's had to use that new restoration so often. Does have himself that uh, stick though, which will be able to start collecting those charges and has a mango, but... Yep. Puppy himself out of mana, but he also has some mangoes to play around with, but hasn't really found that, you know, trade where he tries to deny himself just yet. I think just happy to secure the farm in this lane. All six cores on the map getting farm right now. Bryle, Ooh, looking for some Cyblades, yeah. <laughs> He's, if he managed to land like another Cyblades or two, it would have been very close to a kill, but can't really get that kill until he has the level six traps or he gets something like a haste rune unless he heavily outplays mid one. You've also got to be careful of any TP rotations coming out too. You know, Puppy, if he's able to, if he has mana, obviously, yeah, uh, I, can save him quite easily. Exactly. Probably, probably more so looking at the the tusk since he has that counter play potential as well. If he has a TP with a ice shard snowball, maybe level three, we'll see him have a, have a one one one. He can set up and kill someone like the TA uh, if Od's ready to fight. Mm. Have to be careful about overextension. Yeah, for sure. That's something Brow should be well aware of. There is a haste rune spawning. Uh, it well, has spawned at that top top rune. So that's something that if Brow can get his hands on it, could be potentially leading to a kill, but he's still a bit of a ways away from his level six and it will be OD actually snagging it. I'm surprised that they didn't do more uh, rune control coming out here from both sides. But like you said, you know, Witch Doctor can't exactly leave Moo in that bottom lane and uh, the top lane, you know, they're just trying to put out some damage and secure farm. Yeah, with the 2-1-2 two, two setup, if either support leaves the lane, suddenly it's a 2v1 and there is a bit of an edge going one way, but Bounty Rune's coming out. Lee Mu going in offensively to get the Bounty Rune in. Yeah, Puppy oh, is in nice for some trouble. I do have the Aphotic Shield. We'll go and pop. Is he going to go for this dive here? No, he gets the Denial off. <laughs> Pretty standard stuff for Puppy. Yeah, it was almost a kill as he popped the Rage to stop the Mist Coil from coming out, but luckily he had mana for his shield and... I thought Moose last right click might actually get the kill, but it was just barely not enough damage. Very nicely done from Puppy. Yep. So the status quo kind of continues here. Bounty runes get traded. CS gets traded in all these lanes. There isn't really anyone who's having a tough lane because it is these 2v2 side lanes. And a lot of these pulls are coming out to secure farm for some of these heroes. Puck, top of the CS charts with the help of some of these pulls, and Moo down bottom. We've seen what he can do with free farm on Lifestealer. Uh, so I think for Jay Storm, you're pretty happy. This Lifestealer of Moo, whenever he free farms, has been winning games, but Secret at the same time, uh, not really feeling any pressure, and their draft comes online with their level sixes, with this mid-game. Neither team is looking to necessarily dominate the laning stage to win the game. Looks like March finds that double damage rune here. We'll be able yep. to... Uh, Maybe make a rotation. He's thinking about it. As is fear, they've made this yeah. movement mid one. It's gonna be pretty hard to get. So the astral though coming out aggressively. There's gonna be the coconut thrown out by March. See, they got the maledict down. Shards are gonna keep Bryle away from mid one. He's not gonna be able to do enough damage. Yeah, he'll take a bit more maledict damage and found him, but not that close to really dying. Good rotation from Jay Storm. Um, oh, Zai! Wow, guess Lucky the shot. silence. There it is, first blood forever. Taking down Zai. I think that javelin was fairly freshly purchased. He had 100 gold on top of it, so he must have just got it to lane. It's a big boost in his damage. That level three swashbuckle with javelin. Really powerful laning tool. If you can spam that off cooldown, every time you, you're gonna get some javelin procs and you're gonna do a third of someone like PA or Puck's health. And if you get the silence well, that's where you find that kill. Now and immediately secret swap lanes. Yeah, I was about to ask about that. They just went and sent the uh, Phantom Assassin Abaddon top, so. Yep. I must just feel like having the sustain from the Abaddon up top is gonna help them out a lot. And Puck can play a bit more aggressive, rotate around the map off from the offlane. And also, you know, you're not really afraid or worrying about laning against a lifestealer in this situation. But. Yeah, we also see that March making the rotation top. So it looks like they want to put some pressure down the tower, figuring that, you know, it's just going to be a little bit of back and forth between Mu and Zai and this bottom lane. This is one of the strengths of Lifestealer as a hero and why it has been first pick material for some time, even after getting nerfed, is that once you have that good start and get your phase boots wound up, your supports can leave you. You're self-sustainable. You're not one of these hard carries like Spectre where if you get left alone in a tough matchup, you know you're not going to farm. Lifestealer, 
you've got feast you've got the infest if you want to hop into the jungle to grab a neutral creep you've just got this ability to lane by yourself I don't, still feel like it's going to be very difficult for them to find any sort of a kill over on Tanisha, but perhaps they can yeah. just keep harassing and make it very uncomfortable. Whereas, you know, on the bottom lane, Moo feeling very secure. Like you said, he's got a couple different escapes. If uh, Zai tries to go after him and... Yeah, just getting a better setup where he's also going to get levels too. Yeah, Zai doing his best to harass as much as possible. Knows with this regen rune, he can kind of just spam all his spells out. We'll probably see him use them off cooldown. Actually was skilling up Waning Rift, so prioritizing the silence over the orb damage, which is a, a slower farming build on a puck, but it does give you a bit more kill potential, particularly when you've got like some kind of a setup from someone like a Tusk. A mm, little bit more control as well. Okay, they're going to use the Rolling Thunder. The Snowball connects over with the Shards, but now, oh, Tusk, you oh. have just maybe sealed your own fate here, Yap, so be very, very careful as he just runs out over after Puppy Dream Core. going to get used. Nisha making this rotation, trying to get this kill. They've got the Waning Rift as I makes his way top. They'll find the kill on Forev, and March has to run himself out. <laughs> the rolling thunder in the shards. It kind of looked like it could work against the Tusk, but in the end, it made it kind of awkward for Pengo to actually hit him. He only managed to kind of hit him once and then was bouncing around inside of it without hitting anyone, so... Secret using this sustain, the Abaddon having the heals, the shields, make it so that no one in this safe lane is really killable because Puppy's there to heal whoever you go on and then Tusk is there to counterplay you. Uh, Secret, though, getting just one kill with a puck rotation. Um, and that's where I actually think that's still a win for Jay Storm. Do you lose your Pengo, but Moo has a free farm uncontested lane going down bottom, and you lose one hero to a puck rotation? At worst, I'd say it's about even, but if anything, I favor Jay Storm's position right now. Mm, runes coming up. We'll be able to dodge the cask. Yeah, it decides to get out of there, and good job by Jay Storm to contest the runes before they spawn to bully them away, and they'll get three runes as a result. Mm, might be able to find themselves a kill too. Rolling Thunder coming out. Aphotic Shield buys them a little bit more time. So does the Snowball. We'll bounce off Anisha. Goes down bottom here and they'll follow up with the Puck and the Raining Rift. They'll find the kill on Fear. And now it looks like Marsh is also going to get taken out. Yeah, they're playing a bit too aggressive, but they do secure three runes. And similar to last time, they're farming these other lanes. That was a five man rotation, unlike the last one, which was just Puck for a four man. So. Bryle free farming in mid, life still free farming down bottom. You can see on the gold difference, it's still about a 1k gold lead for Jay Storm, but. Yeah, Bryle, is, the setup, yeah. they've got the Dream Coil, and there's no saving Bryle and Fear needing to be careful as well. Cask is thrown out by March, just warning them off. It's worth, you know, losing a support for a bounty rune up top while your cores farm, assuming those cores don't get caught like that. So getting a kill onto you know, TA or a life seal is how secret pull ahead. Um, and that's forever. <gasps> oh, that was yeah. a big old crit. Is he going to be able to run himself away? No, Nisha hunts him down. Nisha's damage at this point. He is very strong with this phase boots, double wraith band. Even just level six on PA, getting a crit or two is all he needs to suddenly pose a threat to bring down forever. And, Borif has to be careful. That's now his second death in this top lane. And J-Storm, while they're farming very well and efficiently, and we're ahead because of that, despite being down three kills to one, it's now five kills to one with back-to-back -back kills on their off laner and a kill on their mid TA. So that does give Secret a bit more momentum to play around with. And it still feels fairly... I don't want to say complacent, but, you know... Just, I guess part of it is because Moose just constantly, he's got all this room where he can farm. He's got his Midas online now. Uh, Zai also working on that Blink Dagger, and there's going to be the jump onto Moo here. Bottom lane, he's going to go use the open wounds. Needs to be careful. They'll use the Dream Coil. He needs some help. There's going to be the TP rotation coming out from Fear. He's going to be able to go steal himself up that tag team, which is pretty nice, but... Yeah. I think Moo... Without the infest, I guess Puck knew infest was on cooldown, so he thought they could go for a kill, but they weren't particularly close. As J Storm rotate one support to make sure it goes okay. Oh, puppy. puppy, puppy, in for some trouble. No They're silence. Try to get the denial, not gonna be able to find it. Yep. Brile rotating in to make sure that fight goes okay, and J Storm now get their second kill of the game and continue to just secure Mu a free game with all the action in these other lanes. Oh, fear. Not even safe in your own jungle. Shards don't connect, though, and neither does that uh, snowball right there. So, fear slowly but surely trying to run out. Zai, I'm sure he really wants it. Does have the illusory orb. He's going to try to get a steal, but we'll find that kill. Nice try by fear to get the orb still and then try over way, I imagine, with the telekinesis. Mm. But fortunately for him, this puck a little bit too scary at this stage of the game. Mm, Brile, do you know that there's a bear in the trees? Yeah. What's the plan here? Zai?
Still has that double damage on him. Yeah, Brile may be in some trouble. going to get dove here, I have a feeling. Yep, Snowball comes out, Silence, and the Walrus Bunch. And mid one will be able to get that final hit. He just melted. Didn't even get a chance to use Refraction. Um, bit slow to react. He could have definitely used the Refraction before Snowball hit, but maybe he wanted to save it for the last possible second uh, of the gank so that he could try and escape with it. But unfortunately for him, there was a Silence to follow up the, the stun. But... They continue, you know, to free farm this life stealer, but the worry is that Secret is completely controlling these other lanes now, getting repeated kills on TA, on Pengo, taking towers now. Uh, life stealer is a scary carry, but you don't want him to, you know, be your single core as this game goes on, particularly with a hero like TA. TA needs farm and to be playing from ahead typically. You don't really feel good about the game when you're playing catch up as a TA. And we've talked about how, you know, with Moo farming quite well in this bottom lane, we need the other heroes to kind of do more tempo control, right? Oh boy, bottom lane, Moo in for some trouble. We'll get hit by snowball shards. It's a lightning rift, oh everything. Yeah, I, I, just way too aggressive. I think you can do that if there's nothing to cancel your rage TP. You can play this, okay, I'm gonna farm under the enemy tower when they can rotate everyone in. But he sees the gank coming and he's like, I can't rage TP away. So he has to save his rage as a result. And then in the process of saving the rage, he just gets silenced by the puck. So he doesn't even end up getting it off. Um, it's very easy to play some of these carries like life stealer and jug when you can split push and get away using your spin tp rage tp but you have to approach the game very differently when there is that bkb immunity piercing cancel like the walrus punch well we almost wondered during the draft i know the couch was asking did they kind of bait jstorm into picking up the life stealer because they picked up the od here first and then oh put a pause on that one second abaddon yep. it's gonna be tanking a lot of this damage and they're just gonna wait patiently on the side of jstorm should be able to find this kill abaddon will go down march is gonna get taken out by nisha as he tries to run out doesn't have much mana they use the rolling thunder but more tps are coming out but abaddon actually buying back wants to uh, see if he can find some revenge, but it's not gonna be there. You get a tower deny out of this, so that in itself is a decent chunk of gold being denied from J Storm, which, you know, these this first T1 tower or two that a team takes, if it gets denied, that's a, a lot of crucial early game gold being denied from them, so that in itself is maybe worth a buyback, because if Abaddon doesn't buy back, I imagine J Storm try and force that fight. They can threaten to kill the PA in that situation if there's no Abaddon there, um, since PA had used the Blink Strike offensively to go in. But Moo, he rocks up to the top lane, and Puppy does not have ultimate still. No, no, he just used that final fight, and that's a die back now. Nisha in for some trouble. Moo's chasing after this PA. They've caught the Malik. just got to oh, be able to go. Blink. blink over to Zai here in the trees. Just TP out. Zai has that Blink Dagger. Shouldn't get caught here. I believe he'll be able to just walk away. That is such a good position from Zai to be in because otherwise uh, that's just a straight up kill, that, I want yeah, to say. That, I guess yeah. Rubik had used telekinesis already, but even so, they would have been able to likely just chase him down, do enough damage with the Maldict on him. So really heads up play from Zai hiding in those trees, giving a blink strike target for the PA to escape to. It is back-to-back -back deaths on Puppy, not the biggest deal. He's just the five position Abaddon and his farm at this point, not too important. The, the downtime is the most annoying part about it. Yeah, they have the waiting rift that Fear yeah. just stole, so I'm not sure if she's going to be able to get out this time, although with mid-one making the rotation, that that Astral is going to be able to keep her alive a little bit longer. Zion is in trouble. They're going to turn around. He's going to be able to go and hide himself away. Use that Dream Coil, and it looks like maybe Zai making it out. They do have this Infest Bomb right now over in the Pango. March going to get hunted down, and the Infest comes out as they chase after Puppy. They know he could be an easier target, but over on the back lines here, Nisha, he's got his eyes. They drop the Sanity's Eclipse. March Brile taken down, and then Ferev is gonna be long for this world, I have a feeling. Walrus Punch cleans him up, and they're gonna try to take down mid one, but it's a triple kill for Nisha. Oh, you can see how low the entire secret team is. Jay Storm were just so hungry to finish off some of those kills, and unfortunately for them, these secret heroes are just a little bit too elusive. You've got the Puck, who's always hard to kill. He gets the phase shift off with just a sliver of health after a lucky shot silence, and that silence kind of baits them in. You'll see here that early silence coming out onto the Puck with a lucky shot. They think they have the kill, but it's just not the case. And the other save is the Astral. Yeah. There's just so many defensive tools. The Puck with his own kit, the Astral as well. That silence there, he hits him with that rolling thunder. Jaystorm win this fight. And it was just maybe 0.1 seconds away from the Rolling Thunder landing, and instead you, it's Seeker who come out on top with a four for nothing exchange. Puppy also rocking up to offer a lot of heals, a lot of sustain with the shields as well.
And I believe they also pop the mech during that fight too. So it feels lately like what ends up working the best for these teams comes down to, you know, what kind of sustain do you have? Do you have a heal? Do you have, you know, tankier heroes? Yeah. It was so close. That fight could have been a four for nothing the other way almost. Fango looking for another silence, just right clicking away. Mm -hmm. and I think yeah, Zai knows if he gets hit by a silence, he's dead there, so he plays it safe. Mm -hmm. Got their own mech picked up though on the uh, the Pango now, so. Yeah. But this Puck pick against Pango, yeah, the silence kind of, the counter can go both ways if you hit Puck with a silence, but the Dream Call against the Rolling Thunder, a great way of rocking, uh, locking Puck, Pango in place. Hi, okay. Nisha. Yeah, he's got a battle fury already. He is farmed. For sure. For sure. Yeah, you know, I thought it was looking really good in that last fight, too, because Fear was able to steal the Waning Rift off of the Puck, so Nisha not going to be able to do that cheeky, you know, jump away. But, again, didn't matter. Did not matter. Oh. With the OD's defensive tools, the Abaddon, the Tusk Snowball save, three of these heroes have a save on Secret Side. Um, and then you've got Puck, who can just save himself. PA also has a Blink Strike, so very hard to secure these kills. And... Fortune for Jay Storm, when you have going this Radiance lifestyle, you're generally looking for a longer, more drawn out fight. And that's something that Secret are very well equipped for with their heroes. They've got the sustain from Mech, from Abaddon. Uh, they're going to be able to kite around that rage of lifestyle, wait for it to wear out, and then re engage. And they're going to have the Greaves completed soon on the OD, which is going to make these fights even more difficult, especially because of that aura that pops off there. Yep. With Feels is, it looks like he's going BKB. He had the Deso earlier queued up but he can Roshan fairly early too if Secret win a fight. It does feel like they really baited out this life stealer because they have a lot of solutions on how to deal with him and also just the draft that's yeah. coming out now. I think it's, yeah, the important thing is, yeah, having a way to kite around the rage uh, more than anything and then also threaten to kill him, which they've got with the puck silence, the PA burst damage. And the first pick OD, first overall pick of the entire draft. Um, you know, it shows a lot of confidence in what mid one can do with this hero. He can play it as the scaling carry, but he can also play it more as this utility OD where he goes for what we're seeing at a lot of the mids, this Guardian Greaves build. We see SFs go it, and um, here we are seeing an OD get it as well. well they're going to go jump in that Roche pit and hopefully uh, get themselves a nice early Aegis. Doesn't look like anyone on the side of Jay Storm is particularly worried about this or wants to contest it at this time, so. They're not ready to, to fight. Mu is Need that very radiance. close to Radiance and... and uh-oh. Uh All right. Fear could be in for some trouble now. Yeah, for sure. Mid one just running down. They'll get the Witch Doctor ultimate off, trying to do a decent amount of damage here, but they need just a little bit more and they need that lockdown in place. So Fear will fall. This uh, 5k gold lead at the top is, at this stage, before Radiance comes online, more like a 10k gold lead because that's there's basically 5k in Lifestealer that he's not spending, doesn't have an item. So until he has Radiance, this gold lead is even bigger than it looks. Nisha is just so terrifying right now. How can you possibly take down this Phantom Assassin? She's got that. Yep. Aegis online, 9, 0, and 2 gods. This is a very, very scary PA at this time. Two lives and it. A bo Ab Abaddon with aphotic shields to put on him, mist coils, snowballs, and, and we're going to see a BKB. So with the magic immunity, PA can just jump in, go on the supports, instantly kill them, um, and there's nothing those supports can do about it. The J Storm don't have those saves unless Rubik gets a spell still on something like right. an Astral. Do you have the Radiance online though for the Life Stealer? So yeah. there's a little glimmer of hope. And Brile, of course, having the Blink Dagger and the Death I just feel like this TA hasn't done what we were hoping to see, no. right? You really want this hero to be able to pump out a lot of damage early, uh, get the jump on people and start to snowball, and that just hasn't been the case for Brile. The way Jason were playing the first maybe 10, 15 minutes of the game was really solid, though. Keeping it even, they were giving up a few kills to trade for farm, but then a few kills turned into a whole lot more, and that's where things really fell apart. All right, well, Puppy looks like he's going to tank this gank right now. Yeah, I don't know if they kick. want to commit to Puppy. They have Zai on the bottom. They'll go. They'll pop the ultimate and the uh, the trap over here. Shards come through. Zai jumps in with a nice waving rift and the dream coil. And it looks like Yatsu's going to run himself in and just punch this move with one. Now in for some trouble after getting that kill. There's a lot of damage pumped out here from this Witch Doctor. Can they find it? Oh, Brile is waiting patiently over here, hoping that he can get this last hit. The shards come through, trying to save him. Not going to be quite enough. But Zai finding the kill on Forever as he splits that fight. Now Brile, that refraction not going to last long enough. Good bounces, though, coming out from the coconut. 
not but the missed coil finding the final blow on Brile. They will just blow up the life seal to start that fight, and that makes it so hard for J-Storm. They were waiting for this Radiance timing, and then that key hero, their strongest here on their side, gets deleted before the fight even begins. He doesn't do any real damage that fight. It's the Witch Doctor, the Pengo, the TA who clean up the one kill they get in the end, but a puck blink silence followed up by a tough snowball in and od i think no if he gets rage off that fight can turn around well yes they're wow. feeling real confident he just walks okay. right into this base finds a kill on fury he's in for some trouble but he should be able to just tp out some balls of steel on yapsor as he just goes diving in and some big old snowballs <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah. Moo comes back. He's he's going to have to go into some kind of item, I feel like, to get rid of this Puck Silence. Like, maybe we'll see a Manta style after the medallion he's got queued up. But his, you know, you don't really want to go into farm mode right now because Secret's just going to be out farming you. They've got Puck to push out waves, OD, PA. They've got three scaling cores, effectively. Um, TA, yeah, it's, it is a scaling core. Like, it's not just all on the life sealer, but TA playing from behind is not a hero that's going to go amazingly well into the late game. There's a double damage rune top. Double damage. You can see mid one find it. Nisha just walks on over, takes it. I, they're just going to keep running at J Storm yep. right now. There is no time to catch up. Fear is just going to get obliterated. Okay. Yep. Can Two hits. Off? March, not looking so healthy now. Sai uses that dream coil. Dagger comes out from Nisha. They'll split up nicely. And uh, Walrus Punch comes out. Nisha finding the final hit again. So that's going to translate easily into a tower push and into the high ground, most likely. Yeah, this TA, uh, PA can just right click tier threes. You've got plenty of backup. And just got the ages, too. If you go near, you're going to get stifling daggered and jumped on. So this may just be a free, uncontested lane of racks. TA is still in the top lane. Lifesteal is farming the enemy jungle and J-Storm showing no signs of defense. And it's not because they don't have TPs or don't want to defend, it's just because they can't defend. Secret is too strong right now with this mid-game Aegis timing. The double damage on top of that did not help yep. the side of J-Storm, but they'll like, back off after tower in that Rax. Ryle gets found by a Yule Scepter, but Puck ignores him, I believe, going for the bounty runes. Mid one. Just makes a rotation, uses up that Midas. A little bit of a fight over in the mid lane, but they might have gotten baited here. Walrus Punch to open up all with the Rolling Thunder. Nisha's got that BKB. He's got only got eyes for Moo right now. Decent amount of damage coming out as they hit that steal, but they'll find the kill over onto Yapsir. Now Moo will force the run back. The heal and the sustain coming out from Avan doing so much. Dream Quell's gonna get used though over onto Fareb. Dagger's still being thrown out on Moo. They only want to take him down. They're paying attention to him. And eventually, looks like Nisha says, all right, fine. I didn't want to murder you right now anyways, as the Aegis does get reclaimed. Claimed. It's just ignoring this Witch Doctor. Full channel Death Ward doing next to no damage to the PA. PA could have just blink striked on the Witch Doctor, delayed him, but he really wants that kill on Mu. Unfortunately, with the, the Radiance mischance and this newly picked up Medallion of Courage, there's a decent amount of armor. Lifestealer has bonus armor from Phase Boots, Medallion. Um, so he is fairly tanky against the physical damage. And Nisha going for Battle Fury BKB rather than Battle Fury Deso means there's just a little bit less single target burst damage to actually deal with him. But. In the end, um, you know, no casualties for Secret, even though they really were gunning for that life stealer while ignoring some of the su supports. It would have almost won them the game if they kill Mu there, but good news for J Storm is they are still in this one, but they need to be active on the map the second they get this BKB on TA. They need to find themselves a good team fight. Absolutely. It seems like they're trying to be very defensive right now. If they find anything that falls into their lap, any sort of a pickoff, I'm sure they'll be happy for it. But uh, it's, it's tough. They need this TA to really start dishing out a lot of damage. And of course, they need to keep Mu alive and have Mu put out the damage as well. Yeah. But uh, Nisha, very, very strong. Doesn't have, you know, the Dessa, like you said, but the BKB is proving to be an issue because she's got crits. She's got crits. She's got Zai setting up. So, oh, the Dessa's finished. Okay. Yeah, it's, Nisha's incredibly fun. Mm, Haze gets pop on the puck. They just need that lockdown. They had the, okay. uh, the sucker punch in this case. Nice. Yeah, they punish him with the, the ward vision there. Having a ward on that cliff allows them to get the kill. Seeker will be well aware of it. Nice little kill. I mean, that's how you get back in this game. J-Storm, pick apart anyone on Secret who is alone split pushing. The 5v5 team fights are very difficult against heroes that have all these saves and are just out farming you. And the PA BKB is something you just kind of don't want to fight into, so... That's a good little pick, but 
Game is still very hard, just not entirely out of grasp yet. So is the name of the game just to continuously hope that you can find these small pickoffs right now? For the side of J Storm, is that how yeah, they get themselves I, back in? Because they do have the BKB pickup now over on Brile, but I don't think you want to go running face first into Nisha here. Although, yep. okay, double damage gets picked up on Brile. Nisha yeah. can't really be your primary target in a team fight if you're, you know, smoke ganking and find him alone. Sure, you can go on him, right. but um, you're looking to catch Secret by surprise, kill some of these key backliners here is like the Puck, um, the Tuss, the OD. Uh, and deal with the PA last. I think the you just have to accept a PA with BKB death. So is if you're in a team fight, is going to kill some supports, or if uh, she goes on the life stealer, you just have to try keep life stealer alive. Um, and then once that PA BKB wears off, you can fight her. But during the BKB, go for the other key targets. Initiation starting out over on Bryle. Do we go and throw out that illusory orb? PA doesn't want to commit on a witch doctor. Could have gone in with the dagger, but. I think PA knows, like, you know, if you blink in to kill a Witch Doctor with your BKB, that's how you lose a fight. Yeah, you kill Witch Doctor, but then what happens afterwards? Witch Doctor is not the key hero to worry about. And they actually back off from doing the Infest Bomb completely now. I think they realize Secret are kind of grouped up playing as five. No need to contest a five-man Secret lineup, particularly when there's no Roshan to worry about. Um, at least not right at this second. It will be respawning in a couple of minutes, which is something that for Jay Storm, they know the exact respawn of. Perev, he starts to wind up. He's not going to be able to do it. They're just going to be able to take him out even before the fight begins. Do have Bryle in the top lane doing a bit of split pushing, though. So it will force Zai back. Yeah, they... Interesting. They, they found Vision using that mid lane observer ward of theirs. A bit of an unconventional ward, and I think Fora thought he was safe there because they did have a sentry on that cliff next to where he was farming, but different ward spots him out, and Secret happy to just take that pick. They're playing for the next Roshan, I imagine. Oh, Bryle thought he found a Puck, but instead he found a Nisha, or rather Nisha found him. So the BKB gets popped from Bryle, but uh, needs to try to run himself out, trying to just use a Melt Strike. They'll drop the Dream Coil, and just like that, Bryle is out of here. Yeah, it didn't go for a BKB TP. A little surprised about that. Would you think there was just too much damage, maybe? That, that's why I was wondering, or maybe to create space for Mo to take um, that middle tower? He may have thought the Tusk was nearer by and would, had the Walrus Punch. But uh, yeah, he just kind of BKB'd and didn't... It's a Puck. Uh, puck can always play around you. The one thing he maybe could have tried to go for was hitting a side blades off of um, the PA onto the Puck to get that kill, but that was very unlikely, and Zai was positioning himself around it, so... Should have gone for BKB TP, because even if Tusk is there and cancels it, well, you die, but you, you tried to survive. Uh, the What he went for there was just not going to lead to him escaping, but hard to kind of judge some of those situations. And unfortunately for him, Secret, one of those teams that will punish every little mistake, and they kill the TA. They're now focusing on Shrines. Roshan respawning soon, and the trap in the Roshan pit's been dewarded, so J Storm no longer have that vision over the Rosh respawn, but they have to imagine it's coming up soon. It was almost a, a max respawn. You have to be a little bit more worried now because mid one picked himself up a BKB, I believe that's on the way. Everyone on secrets, very tanky. And one of the issues with JSOM's lineup is it is primarily physical damage. So OD having this early shivers plus greaves, very tanky. Um, even Abaddon had double chainmail. Like this is, Puppy has the weirdest item builds. He's obsessed with these armor items. He used to go casual bucklers and all these heroes. He's one of those players that just seem, has done the math or just has some like six cents for Dota where it's like armor is gonna, having this one chain mail is gonna keep me alive in a fight and then I'll turn around and win, win a fight. And you know, he's willing to invest gold in items that don't turn into anything. Well, there was his eye there. That's <laughs> yeah. a pretty good pick off for the side of Jay Storm. That's their main initiator. He got bursted quickly. Yeah, that was that was some thirst on that buck. And they see that they're over here by the Roche pit. Have their eyes on Poppy now. Uses that shield. They'll drop a couple traps. Rolling Thunder coming out from Ferev. Buck has no buyback, so if they can get Roche for themselves. Oh, there's a BKB though from mid one, and he just takes out March. No problem with some help from Nisha. Both of these BKBs doing a lot of work. Mo, he can't get away fast enough. He's gonna get taken out as the snowball keeps going. They want to grab Bryle possibly, but should be able to get himself away. Buyback's coming out from Mu and March as they go right back into the fight. Cag skip throws out by March. He's definitely dead for this. There's no way he survives. That's a triple kill coming out as they find the kill on Fear and 
March. And they're still not done. Bryle standing up here. Ties his eyes over onto Ferev, and they've got the vision. He's going to go up onto the cliff this time on purpose, but he doesn't matter. Nietzsche says, I will go right on up there, Moo. Now he has to be careful because he did buy back. He's trying to fight mid one. He's not going to be able to. He's going to get taken. Is there a rampage? Down. Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah, Come on. Yeah, Absor. <laughs> I thought... You just click the PA and it's suddenly like there's a satanic. He just got there, so and suddenly it's satanic. Yep, so on Tusk has an assault caress. I mean, armor is the name of the game. AC on a Tusk, double chainmail on an Abaddon. Everyone itemizing to just make the physical damage of TA a non factor. Life seal of primarily physical damage. Even with the Radiance, it's still this kind of like you want to rage and right click people and use the Radiance of the Mist, but. J-Storm were so far behind, they just couldn't keep up in terms of items, couldn't do any damage, and that last big TA not really panning out how they planned. No, it definitely felt like they kind of baited out that life stealer again.